What is good to the family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's going on with the overall market, which you should be watching for as time progresses. What the news is saying about Tesla and what Jerome Powell just said about the markets is going to affect how we move forward tomorrow. Before I break into these all this information, though, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. The offer ends in just six days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market and Tesla. Tesla was down 5.46% for the day, and it's dropping a bit more in the after hours, looking relatively weak. And as Tesla is dropping, this is because of different things involving a new downgrade from HSBC, talking about their new price target on Tesla, not to mention some recall news, which I talked about in the morning, and uh, Tesla raising prices in China. So all these things have been negative for Tesla. We also had some remarks from Joe Biden that affected Tesla. So I'm going to break all of this down over the next couple of minutes before I break down the charts. But let's first start off with the big thing that affected us, and that's Jerome Powell. What did Powell say? Basically, he was being very hawkish today. He said, said that the Fed may have to continue to raise rates if necessary. He said that uh, some of the things that the Fed have done could work against them in terms of reducing inflation back down to their 2% target. He said that the Fed is going to be very firm and restrictive to get the 2% target in place, and a lot of work has to be done. He mentioned that the Fed is not done just yet. They're going to closely monitor the data and look at how things are looking. And there's a possibility of another rate hike for this year. And that's what he said. So that caused the market to slow down. The market was initially anticipating that the Fed would be done with raising rates. And Powell basically, you know, told us that, hey, the Fed is actually not done just yet. They might, you know, have to do it again, depending on the data. And that is not what the market wanted to hear. So this was expected, guys. In my previous videos, I was telling you that, you know, we had these bearish divergences on SPY, on NVIDIA, on Apple, and all these different tickers. So I was anticipating some downside. NVIDIA was the stock that went a little bit hotter than expected. I was talking about like a 480 peak. It went up to like 482 or something before this thing started to reject. But the move was what I was anticipating, a little pop and drop. And this ended up perpetuating throughout the markets in a very collective manner as Jerome Powell affected us alongside other factors. For our earnings, we have Unity and just a couple of others, but nothing too big for now. Just wanted to inform you about that. Nothing too big for the time being. For data affecting the markets, we had Powell giving his speech. And now before the market opens tomorrow, we have two more Fed speakers. Uh, this is going to be Logan and Bostic from the Fed starting tomorrow morning. And then that's pretty much it. At 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a set of pieces of data coming out. We have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, the five-year inflationary expectations, and just a couple of other pieces of data that could affect uh, the markets and the overall sentiment of investors and what we're expecting for inflation. So we're going to be watching these very carefully. We're going to be watching to see what happens with this data. Expect some volatility at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But based off the charts, uh, I still believe that regardless of what happens, whether we get a small pop or not, the market has more downside coming later on. I'm going to break down why in just a couple of minutes. Now, for other pieces of data, you can see right here that the fear and greed index is becoming more fearful. We were very close to neutral. Right when the market was almost neutral, we saw the fear step in. And on top of this, many of these indicators are becoming more fearful from the market momentum, favoring fear a bit more. And if you look at the puts and call options ratios, they're now neutral. They used to be a little greedy yesterday. And we're starting to see this drop. You guys can see it's starting to drop a bit. And we might see this start to push up to the upside later on. And I think that this is going to get closer to fearful mode again because of what's happening. But I'm going to break down why this is not the end of the world and why the market's not going to crash forever. Let me just talk about a couple more things before I get to that. Uh, for Joe Biden, he came out and he said he supports the UAW push to unionize Tesla, Toyota, and et cetera. The UAW is pushing to try to do so, but they haven't been successful at trying to do this to Tesla just yet. We will see if anything develops from this. And with this trend going on, I think we're still waiting for some updates involving the, what's going on with the Swedish ports because there was a blockade, and I think that they're trying to clear it up right now. But 
Uh, I haven't seen it too many big updates yet. We'll be waiting for those to see how things are looking over there. But with this trend going on, this is a little negative news for Tesla. Alongside this big piece of news that came out, the HSBC analysts have said that Tesla could drop more than 30%, and they lowered their price target to $146 a share, saying that there's potential downside risk for Tesla. Now, they could say many different reasons. They simply stated that Elon Musk is one of the reasons why this could happen, some of the things that he has said. And his actions are one of the reasons. Uh, I'm not saying they're right or wrong. It's just what they're saying. They also mentioned that the work that Tesla is doing involves lots of capital for those investments into robotics and their new technologies. So it requires a lot of capital during a time like this. And times are getting tougher thanks to macroeconomic events and et cetera. And it's just going to make things harder for Tesla. They're saying that Tesla's margins are too thin and that Tesla has some potential downside coming. They mentioned once again that their future businesses, their valuations, their supercomputing and autonomous driving. Once again, it's, it's very expensive and they just think that Tesla could start burning more cash. And they just went on about the overall finance uh, sectors of Tesla and things like that. So they're talking about how things could get tougher for Tesla. We could see more downside. And I do agree with them to some extent. There could be more downside coming, but I don't feel that way for the end of the year, especially after the Cybertruck event. I still believe things could shift. I will talk about that in just a few minutes. HSBC has reduced their price target for Tesla. That's the analyst that just came out. And that's very important. I think Jeffries did the same thing just a couple of days ago too. Uh, when it comes to comparisons with the market, Tesla performed very similar to the market, but a little bit weaker. So both SPY and the QQQ were down. We saw the NASDAQ and S&P 500 dropping alongside other indices and ETFs. And Tesla followed the trend and Tesla was even more bearish because of external bearish catalysts. Now, the price price ratio is dropping as Tesla is starting to underperform, losing some strength. We tend to be green only about 48% of the time on Fridays. So there's a risk of downside. And yes, November's tend to be strong historically, but we're going to start off a little weak. I would say for the next week to two weeks, as we have some bearish catalysts and the market may slow down for a very healthy pullback. Uh, look for more volatility during the second hour of the trading day and also during 2 p.m. or during like the later hours. So 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we tend to see the most volatility for Tesla. So watch that hour very carefully. And that's it for now. Now, one thing worth noting is that the financial estimates are still high for Tesla. So it's still projected to, you know, continue to pump as time goes on and improve in this sector. But for the time being, for right now, Okay, things could get tough for Tesla. So I'm just going to see some more buying opportunities. So I look at this in a very optimistic lens. I just wanted to warn you guys about the short term. The short term may not be very pretty, but the long term is still very bright. 140, uh, 142 million was close to what the volume was. Uh, so we dropped on high volume and that's not the best of signs. So I was Tesla looking, it looks bearish guys. Uh, we didn't finish filling our gap at 205. And I think that we have a very bearish looking daily candle. Uh, look for the little rebound towards this 210 area as resistance. We have 209 and then 210 and 212 as resistance levels. I think we could rebound just a little bit. Then we're going to see more selling and we're going to complete our gap fill down to 205 very soon. And that's what I'm anticipating over the next couple of trading days. If 205 fails us, watch 204, 202.5, and then 200 as support. I think Tesla could get very close to these levels, but we're going to be watching how 205 holds first. If we lose it, I anticipate more downside. Now, Tesla's looking more bearish when you look at this distributive structure that's developing, and we have a gap to fill. So I do anticipate more downside that's likely going to be coming soon. When you look at Tesla's four-hour time frame, it's continuing to look bearish as the PPO is looking like bearish momentum is building up. On the daily time frame, Tesla's also starting to look bearish. We have this bearish-looking daily candle. We're about to get another crossover on the PPO, and we have this big gap to fill. We're not done yet, so I anticipate more selling to come. Don't forget, guys, Tesla could be forming uh, you know, another bearish-looking structure as we're continuing to make lower highs and lower lows. But the thing about Tesla is I don't think it's the end of the world for Tesla. I think that there's going to be a bounce towards like the uh, later end of November going into December. And I think that the whole market still has a bounce coming. So how do I think this is going to move? Here's the, the answer, guys. SPY has an inverse head and shoulders right here. So we have this left shoulder here, the head, and I think a right shoulder is going to be forming. I think that SPY is going to drop to 430. I think the market's going to sell off more. Okay. But... We're going to establish a higher low. I don't think we're going to crash back down to 400 on SPY. I think we could be hitting 430. If we lose that, we could come into the 420s. But the market's going to bottom and get a nice bounce for the end of the year for another rally. Okay, so what I'm saying is 
the market's going to likely drop. But if the Fed pauses again during the next FOMC meeting, which is in about like four weeks, four to five weeks, and if we get like not too much bad data, this shouldn't be a big crash. It should just be a, a very healthy pullback before the market finds a bottom and then starts bouncing. We have a nice inverse head and shoulders and other technicals suggesting that. For example, if you look at the 10-year treasury yield, we have a head and shoulders like pattern developing on it. We have a left shoulder here, a head. Uh, I think that this right shoulder is going to form once we fill this gap, suggesting that there's more downside coming for equities, for Tesla and SPY. But eventually it's going to start selling off in December as the market starts to bounce. So I want to make that as clear as possible. I'm not saying it's a crash. I've never said this is a new crash coming. I'm saying it's a healthy pullback because we pumped from 409 to 440 in a very fast manner and we're due to cool off. We're due to pull back in a very healthy fashion before the market bounces. I want to make that as clear as possible. I want to be as honest as possible. That's what I see, a little pullback before the market bounces. So how do we look right now? The answer is bearish. SPY is looking bearish too on the four hour time frame on the daily as well. We have a daily bearish engulfing candle and I anticipate more downside to be coming. So watch resistance at 434 and then 435 above that. Then we have 436 and then 436.5 as resistance levels. For support, you're going to be watching 433 and then 432.5, which happens to be another confluence of support with this green trend line. This is the historical support on SPY. If we lose this 432.5 to 433 area, I expect us to come down to pull the gap at 430. I think that we're going to see 430 very, very soon. So what do I think SPY is going to do? Just like Tesla, I think it's going to pop a little bit. We could try to we could try to get back to 435, but I think that the upside is going to be limited. I think that because of Jerome Powell, there's going to be more downside and SPY is ultimately going to come down to 430 very soon. Look for a little pop and drop or a drop from here. It really depends on different factors such as the data for tomorrow morning, but I anticipate that the market has more downside coming soon nonetheless, and I think that we're not done with the selling. For the QQQ, it's the same thing. We have a bearish engulfing candle on the chart. The daily is starting to look more bearish. Also, the four-hour time frame on the QQQ looks bearish. So see, the four-hour PPO is bearish on the QQQ. The daily looks bearish on the QQQ. If you look at the daily close, it looks like there's more downside coming. So on the QQQ, make sure you watch 369 is support. If we lose that, watch 368. If we lose that, we're coming all the way down to 366. If we're bullish, you want to see it try to get above 372. I think it might retest 370.5 to 371, then reject and eventually make its way down here towards 368. We might shop a bit in the 368 area before we sell off to 366. But nonetheless, I see downside coming. I look for a little pop and drop. That's the most likely possibility. And I see more downside as well. Don't forget, we have some data at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time that, that could affect the volatility, but I still anticipate some downside. On NVIDIA, we had a slight bearish divergence. Uh, we also had the bearish divergences on SPY and QQQ I was calling out, and they're playing out so far. On NVIDIA, we had it, and this ended up developing into a double bearish divergence. Like right here, it ended up developing. And the, uh, NVIDIA is looking a bit weaker. So watch resistance at 470. 472, and we also have 474.5, and then like 478, uh, 480, and beyond. We have a lot of resistance we just got past from historical data. And then for support, you're going to be watching. Uh, first off, we had 468 as support. We're actually below this in the after hours. Then we have 465 for the gap fill coming next. If we end up losing for this 468 area tomorrow morning, if we fail to hold it, if we lose 465, anticipate it's going to come down towards 462 and then 460. What do I think NVIDIA is going to do? I think it's going to pop a little bit, maybe try to back test 470, then fail, and it's eventually going to come down to at least 465, if not below that, and start sinking towards 460. And even these lower levels, like you know 455, are possibilities. Look for a little pump and drop, and I think at the very least we see 465 or below that. I think there's downside coming. For Apple stock, I'm seeing something very similar. We developed a triple bearish divergence. We got this big rug pull on Apple thanks to Jerome Powell. And I think that Apple, just like Tesla, Spy, and these other tickers, it has downside. It may even lead the way down as we have this triple bearish divergence right here that developed. I think that Apple could backtest 183. It's going to likely make an attempt to bounce and then just fail. And I think it's going to eventually test 182. And once we lose this, I anticipate it's going to come all the way down to 180 over the next couple of trading days. Now, for resistance, don't forget to be watching 182.5. 
we break that, 183 is a possibility, then 183.5, then 184. My prediction was Apple would hit 184 to 185 and then reject off somewhere in this range and start selling off. We managed to touch 184.1 and then we just rejected. So I, I anticipate that there's more downside coming. It might pop a little bit, but we're eventually going to sell off. And I think that 180 could be on the table. All right, guys. So with that said, you know, if we look at just a couple of other tickers, the VIX is looking bullish. We had a nice bullish divergence, which I called out yesterday. The PPO is about to cross on the four hours. So I think it's going to eventually uptrend because the market has a bit more downside. Once again, guys, compared to the massive pump we got uh, from the very beginning of November, you know, since the market's been pumping so hard, SPY went from 409 to 438, almost 439. And just, you know, within two weeks, which is pretty insane, it happened within that time frame and less than that time frame. So we're due for a pullback. Uh, even if we drop, you know, 10 points, 15 points, it's still very healthy. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. And I still think the market's going to bounce in December. But for now, it's not December time. We're just going to focus on the trust in front of us. And right now, it looks like the VIX is telling us there's going to be more downside for equities and the VIX has more upside. SQQQ also likely has more upside, going to be looking for a push towards this 18.96 area. The dollar also has more potential upside. If we break 106, I anticipate it's going to push higher towards at least 106.5. We have a nice cup and handle information for the upside. So I'm seeing more potential for that. For a couple more, the IWM looks more bearish. Going to be looking for it to eventually come down towards 165 and 163, especially if you lose 166. We're looking more bearish on the four-hour time frame. It could pop towards 168 and reject and start selling off. Uh, for a couple of others, Microsoft did almost exactly what we predicted. We were talking about 365-ish around there to be tested, 365 to 366, then rejecting. And we came up to 364.79, 21 cents away from the target before it came right back down. And still looks bearish and be looking for a little pop towards 361 and a rejection for 358 or even below that for 357.5. For AMD, looks a bit more bearish, similar to NVIDIA. Could rebound just a little bit before this thing starts to head downwards. So we're going to be waiting. We're going to be watching this all very, very carefully. Um, to add on to this, guys, don't forget to be watching it uh, very carefully, especially as time goes on, because we're continuing to see, you know, these big changes within the confluences, and we just want to be as patient as possible. Uh, to add on to this, if you want to look at some other tickers, uh, I think that my software just froze. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, I might be having a Wi-Fi problem. Uh, not sure what just happened, but anyways, the, the bottom line is, guys, I'm anticipating some very similar pieces of price action uh, the market's going to likely cool off very, very soon, and I'm still holding the same view, so I might have to cut the video here because of this Wi-Fi issue. I'm recording this like 10 minutes before I post the video, so I don't want to take too much of your time. I am sorry about this. Not sure what just happened. But anyways, uh, anyways, it's, it's the same thing, guys. I anticipate there's going to be more selling coming for Meta and even for Amazon, so I don't think the market is done just yet, and I, I hopefully should be able to get this Wi-Fi issue fixed as soon as possible. But anyways, thank you for listening. Please have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Sorry for having to cut this short. Please take care, and peace out.